People just love to collect stuff. But let me tell you something about serious collectors. Serious collectors don't like junk. Serious collectors aren't going to sell you a hundred dollar item for ten bucks. Serious collectors don't pawn their treasures. Serious collectors exist everywhere. Collecting Seriously, a show dedicated to real collecting. Without the buying, selling, or haggling. Educational, interesting, and entertaining. Seriously. Well, I wonder what the weather's got in store for us today. Well, if I'm reading that correctly, it's just what I thought. My name is Jimmy Sparks. I wanted to create a show that showcases collections and collectors. Expert mega collector Doug Smith and I have no trouble finding incredible collections in every category you can think of, and in any neighborhood in any city. No selling, no buying, no haggling. We're not interested, and they're not either. We are all about the stuff. It's collecting, seriously. <laughs> Rock collecting seriously, you may see this logo. A fool. We think a good way to check out somebody's collection without feeling overwhelmed is to, in your own mind, categorize what it is you're actually seeing. Most collections may consist of bulk, the mass or size of it all, fun items, the pieces that people are naturally drawn to, unique items, the rare, limited, one of a kinds, and usually the most valuable pieces, and the ace in the hole, which is anything the collector has pride owning. It can be the best, the first, the favorite, or even something they don't have yet. Not all collections have these traits, but following these four guidelines might help you not to get lost. A fool. Hey, Jimmy, what do you got there? Oh, just a box of old door stops I got at a garage sale for 50 cents a piece. Oh, that ain't a bad deal. Door stops, eh? That's what you call those? Well, that's what my aunt used to call them. She used to prop open doors with these. They weigh about three pounds a piece. Well, actually, what these are are electrical insulators. They were used on telephone and electrical poles to keep hot wires away from the ground. The voltage potential in the wires has the ability to push the current to ground if it can find a conductor in which to convey the current. But insulators have a huge resistance to current. So what other kinds of insulators are there? I mean, are they all made of glass? I've got a friend who collects insulators and lightning rods and weather vanes and that sort of thing. Maybe we could get him to invite us in. Well, it's all well and good, but I still need a doorstop. Wow. This is really impressive, Jack. When we were talking earlier, you said that you started working for the uh, Iowa, Illinois Gas and Electric Company. Is that right? That's right. Well, tell me, how long have you been collecting and how did you get started in all this? Well, I started collecting insulators in about 1970. I would go down after work and go through all the bins and bring home what they had. But other fellows were giving them to me too. And uh, but then about 1985, I spotted all these lightning mod balls that shows that I set up, kind of put the insulators on a back burner. Glass insulators were started to be made in 1850, but the government stepped in in about 1890 and said if you're going to make insulators, they're going to have to be good for a certain voltage. Mm -hmm. And that's when electricity was starting to be used more, and, and a lot of them quit it. Then in about the middle 30s, porcelain insulators, they were making them before, but they really become big because they were cheaper to make, mm -hmm. they were more durable. Purple insulators, there was very few that were made purple and so they turned in the sun. There was magnesium added to the process of it. Those turned in the sun. Turn, the, turn colors? That's right. Okay. That's right. Most of the colors is what people collect. You know, Jack, when I was a kid, I grew up next to the railroad tracks. And I can remember picking up a whole box of insulators. And I found out that people actually collected them, but I couldn't understand why, because in my mind, there was only one, and I had it. And it's like, how can you collect insulators? Well, probably most of them that you picked up were aqua. Right. That's what most of them you find. You can go miles and miles on the railroad, and they'll all be the same insulator. These are called drip points. These look like shark teeth. 
and they will put on there so the rain would dissipate. It wouldn't get to the pole, but they broke a lot. So the water would come down to that point and then just drip right. off? that's correct. Rather than collecting along the rim? That's correct. If you get the cross arm wet, then that's when you have trouble. Oh, I hate it when the cross arm gets wet. Pardon? I hate it when the cross arm gets wet. <laughs> <laughs> that's a Mickey Mouse. That's what the linemen all named it, and pretty soon the person that sold it was calling it Mickey Mouse in the, in the catalog. It was made for heavy cable. The cable laid right here, and then there was a smaller wire that was a figure eight that held the cable on. Very, very hard to come by, this cobalt blue. I understand it was an expensive color to make, and there was very few of them, uh, but uh, you found them in the railroad yards. At a show, uh, if this was mint, this would sell for about $500. So you said that you collected uh, insulators for quite a while, but then your interest turned to lightning rod balls. Maybe we should talk a little bit about the lightning rod itself. Um, this was a copper rod, is that, that right? A, that's correct. They put it on top of uh, tall buildings. The electric companies hadn't built out to farms. They would be on garages, they would be on houses, and uh, you find them on anything. But the ball and the weather rain was just for beauty. Electric company had so many grounds. Each, maybe every pole was grounded, and uh, that would be uh, enough protection. And so it kind of took uh, lightning rod people out of business. In the back of my mind, I'm thinking, why don't we see lightning rods anymore? You'll see some lightning rods. You won't see the ball, you won't see the weather vane, but you'll see a short rod up there. Lately, in the last eight, ten years, there's been a lot of reproduction, but there are some of them they are hard to tell from the real thing. So it's buyer beware. You know, Jack, you told me that the, the white and the blue milk glass were the most common, but there's a, a lot of different designs here. They're really beautiful. You wouldn't think that these would be common. The white and the blue are the most common in the plain brown, but when you get into the design or the name, then they aren't the most common. You mentioned that the lightning rods were decorated with the balls. That's and then correct. The farmer or, or whoever was putting up the lightning rod might put a, a weather vane on top. And I noticed that you have a bunch of them here. These are called arrows. If it's an animal or a car, then the weather vanes. Probably 150 different kinds. Do all the arrows have glass in them then? All the arrows have glass, yes. Do they still make arrows today? No. I suppose they all have their name that you collect. Yes, refer they to all have on. a name to them. It's called the moon and shooting star. I don't clean them, by the way, because if you clean them, they look like they're brand new. Oh, you want to yeah. preserve the patina, as they I say. I did when I first started collecting. And the first guy at the table where I took it to a show, he said, is this new? Uh -huh. So I quit it. The guy might order 24 or 48 of them, they would all be a different size. Some would be real small and some would be quite large. I notice that you have a couple over here that's the, the entire assembly, the, the lightning rod with the ball and the arrow on top. And show us how it all goes together. Yeah. Is this typical? Is this uh, what you'd see in the old days? No, it's not typical. Uh, I have three lightning rod balls. The setup only has one. But the, this isn't typical either. This is called pendants. Very few setups had the pendants. They were more expensive. Farmer didn't want to pay for them. It seems like the weather would just knock these things around and break them. Uh, they did. Water would get in them, and then they would freeze in the winter and bust. Normally there would only be one ball on it? Right, normally it would be one ball. The only thing I don't have is the point that the shins had. This is a lecture. This is a different company. I've never found the point at any show or anything that the shin company had. The shin company was one of the largest companies in the business. This car weather rain, you didn't see many of them either. The farmer didn't want them. Uh, they're real popular with collectors. Well, that's a car just like the one Jim drives. This i seen for 30 years in a lady's house in the Galesburg. Well, uh, her husband was alive too when I first looked at it. Every time I went down there, I tried to buy it, but uh, with no success. And uh, both of them passed away and they had no 
no relatives, and it went up for a knock, and, and uh, I had to go quite high to get it, but I wanted it. On eBay, the, about a couple months ago, one of these went for $6,500, and it wasn't even mint. Huh. So this is what you would call a weather vane? Yes, this, is a, this is a weather vane. Many, many just have the horse. They don't have the rider. So the rider is what makes this rear. That's, that's correct. What is it about yourself, do you think, that makes you collect? It, just, it isn't that I want to hog everything, but I just certain things appeal to me. Uh, all kinds of glass appeal to me. And are you still buying today? Yes. <laughs> you can't get out of it. <laughs> you can't quit it. <laughs> At least I can.